Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to part 11 of the TOS Enterprise build. Um, today we're going to start working on uh, wiring up the uh, facade collectors where all the flashing lights and circular light things go off. So let's head over to the bench and take a look. Well, welcome back. Today we're going to work on the cells. Getting the Bassard uh, collectors uh, worked on, but let me show you where the, the ship is at. Started puttying the seam here. And back here. That's looking pretty good, especially back in here. Just gonna do a little perfect uh, plastic putty to finish those seams up. This one here, or definitely here, was a little open, so I used uh, the testers contour putty because that actually melts plastic a little bit too, so it'll make a good bond and kind of act like a glue too. Got a little bit up in there. Neck joints look pretty good, but I think I'm going to run perfect plastic putty around the neck joint. These we don't have to worry about because they can have a little bit of a seam panel line, seam line. Because the original one does. Because these are supposed to be like they can come off. Same thing with the nacelles. You don't have to worry about really puttying up here. Just want it to look smooth. Right now the thin set cement, the extra thin cement, pretty much made those seams look pretty good. <clears throat> Even on the neck, but still <clears throat> I want to get in there and put perfect plastic putty around here and this seam we don't have to worry about too much because the saucer was meant to come off that's why it has the landing gear things on the bottom of the saucer but yeah it's looking good I actually went and pre-painted the shuttle bay hatches because I knew that's going to be hard to work around. But at least if I did that, I could somehow block this off and just airbrush in there. Because I'm going to have to put some, uh, seal up some of the area in there. But at least I can just airbrush in those areas. And this tailpiece I'll actually, you know, pre-paint and then stick on. And we'll probably have to putty the edges here and probably at the bottom just trying to keep a little spraying towards this end because I'm not sure how I really want to mask this off so we don't get overspray inside the shuttle bay it's such a hard way to do you can't mask on top because we put a line so I can stuff some stuff in there and help but we'll worry about that when we get to it but yeah, it's coming along good. I can actually start working on that soon. And the cells themselves are light blocked. So we just got to put the... I'm going to do the blue light in here. But I'm going to put it on a switch so it doesn't always have to be on. Um, Gary sent also a yellow light that you could put to light those circular domes. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't, I don't remember it being canon or anything, but... I'm going to put it in there anyway and put that on a separate switch as well. So I'll have two switch legs up here. And then I have the permit power for the little light, beacon light that's on the top here. Which I don't know if ever lights, but I'm going to make it light. It's there, why not? <clears throat> but I figured I'd start getting on these uh, Bassard collectors. Get these kind of drilled out and wired up. This is the, he gives you a, uh, with the light kit, he gives you clear plastic discs and then he gives you a decal where you need to drill. I added some different areas. He just had the, uh, these outer eight, I think it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. And that would take <clears throat> the orange LEDs and that's what's going to rotate with the board. But I'm going to add <clears throat> another four two blues, a red, and a green, and I'm going to light those through those weird teardrop Christmas light looking things. 
I'm going to insert them in. So it's more like the original, you know, uh, part that comes with the kit. And uh, then also the little dots, I'm going to put some of those that are for the original kit. These I'm not going to light, they're just going to be in there and I'll paint them, you know, random colors, red, green, blue. But I pre-did this one. And then uh, I had to drill the hole to make sure the this actually goes. And I can still have, get a motor for this. Make those spin. But I'm not into the motors. They're just always noisy. Even the most quiet ones still. There's some that are pretty good. I think the ones from Tenet Controls are quite quiet. But it's still, you still hear them. And here I'm going to put the photo etch. I'm either going to use the photo etch or um, Lou from Aztec Dummy. I have the window masks. He also gives you some vinyl to put there, which works really good too. You just got to paint the vinyl so it's not yellow or black. I don't know if he gave it, it comes in black or yellow. I'll have to see. But still, I'd rather have it like a silver. The photo etch is a brass. I might actually leave it as the brass color in there. I kind of like seeing brass parts, but we'll see. I'll do a test and see which ones I like. And let's get the uh, orange ones first. We'll hit the perimeter. Oh, I need to center punch all these. It makes it much easier. It's a center punch will work. I was being stubborn yesterday. If I remember, I'm going to make those dots, those Christmas trees. Five millimeters down from that line there that the other bulbs are on. So that's where those are going to be. Sorry about my voice. It's this happens every time I go through chemotherapy, I get congested and it's almost like having a bad allergy. Did we do this one already? Alright, but we got all those. Now if I can remember all the bits that I used. I know this is the uh, 1 8 works for 3 millimeter bulbs. We'll get these drilled out. See, I use this little mat as my drilling mat. There we go. So now we got those. <clears throat> and I always leave that plastic film on there. It helps, for, you know, when things not shattering or chipping out. Always save restaurant little containers, like take-home containers, or if you're in like a restaurant. <clears throat> and uh, excuse me. If you're in a restaurant and they have those like ketchup holders and stuff like that, always save them. I think this is one of like those little ketchup holders. They make good little parts, you know, holders. Like instead of having all those little clear parts floating around in the box, they're safer in here.
Yeah, I probably could have got bulbs in here, which are the bigger holes for the Christmas tree little things. And these tall, hold taller ones are for the light ones, but how many does they give you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's like ten, and I got eight channels. It's like, what do I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know what I mean? There's no, it doesn't work. If I had a ten channel, you could do it. But... So I did look at that to see how I could either use it or mod it. I think I did. It, it does. It fits in that chuck. You gotta be careful because once you get to the plastic and you hit this, it drills right through that real quick because that's so soft. As you can see, I've done multiple times. All right. Now just the center, right? Yep. And I'll move to this one, and then we'll move to the... Here's the thing I hate about fire drills. They'll just pull themselves through plastic. That's where these drills are much better. They make a cleaner hole and they won't try to pull themselves through. And I think I went up to the fifth hole in here. Our fifth, one, two, three, four, five, which is one quarter. Yeah. There we go. Make sure this goes through. Yep. All right. Let's get these plastic of the sticker that I gave you. It came off easy on the other one. There you go. <clears throat> Don't need that no more. Get this factory. Okay. Find an edge. There we go. Yeah, we gotta shoot this. I think that sticker was off too. Oh, okay. When I come back, we'll start. Uh, I probably should uh, get them coated first. Or start putting bulbs in it. So I'm gonna go and spray those, get that hole a little better, and then spray those. And then uh, we'll start setting the bulbs. Well, welcome back. I started a. Uh, Working on the bassards here. I got all the orange bulbs in. And then got all the kit parts. I painted uh, two, well, four of them blue. It'd be two on each uh, bassard. And then I painted two red and two green, which the red and green were already in there. And then I painted a bunch of. Uh, these little ones, I'm not going to use these two. I'm going to put, I think, what, one, two, three, four, I think it's just four. Two reds and a uh, blue and a green, which I did two reds, and there's the blue and the green. To split up the colors. I just figured I'd put them in there just for, you probably will never see them, but if some light glows, you know, if this uh, piece here. 
glows a little bit, which it does, even with just the lights I put in it. Um, but it's a clear piece of plastic and I just painted it transparent red on one side and then hit it with a clear gloss just to seal it. But that side I'll have on the back and then the clear side I'll have on the facing outwards. That's how I set them up. And I got that one to go in there and then what it is is this one here is an actual flasher which is slaving this one and this one here is a flasher and it's slaving that one so I didn't have to use four flashers that would which would kind of be cool because then they'd be kind of all just doing their own thing. But uh, that at least gives this, because otherwise this was just calling for the orange rotating, you know. And plus it's got other modes where it do just like the NX, the NX1. It has other modes where it can do different things, but, you know, things going back and forth and things kind of swirly. And, and then see what it looks like with the spiral thing, but we got to frost that put its bars on the blades but that helps diffuse it especially when we diffuse it more the only other thing I gotta do is I'm gonna have to drill and hopefully I'll have room which I will and hopefully we can sneak it because that comes out here I gotta drill this hole through and I want to put a light SMD right behind it. This one goes here. I'll have to see how the other one slides over top too. Because that could be a problem. But yeah, so we'll show you how to do one of these. I got my uh, this new toy, my helping hands, instead of using these all the time. And I can use those for other things. Yeah, I'm happy how that came out. I mean, I'll show you the back there. There's what the back looks like. All the negatives I just bent over to touch the other one. And the negative is just one big loop. And then it has a uh, prong here to attach the master negative to. And then all the center, all the positives I bent in and then bent up to go into a circle that fits this circle. For all the multi cables that are going to come from the control board. And I made sure that negative would fall in one of those little gray slots. So I want to try to make sure I do that same thing to this one because you can see it's got perfect. Some of those center ones can bend in a little more, but. Alright. Best thing here, we don't need that. We gotta get those bulbs glued in first. Get the red marker and mark the positives because it's easy to get, once you start bending them, it's easy to get confused with what you have. And you want to try to keep your positives into the center. Yeah, we're gonna want those to face inwards. The positive. And you just hit it with some silver glue. Oh, I want to grind each one of these bulbs. Almost forgot. I just, all I'm doing is taking the little dome off so I have a wider spread. Now we can put you in. Place the positive toward the center. Get you a little glue.
And believe it or not, this becomes very time consuming. Sometimes just grabbing them and shaking them like that gets the glue to go all the way around them. That's where looking from the upside, I was thinking because these blues are that way, they're kind of 11 o'clock. These I want at 1 o'clock. I was thinking going this way, but when you flip this around, eh, that'll be wrong. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Screw up. So we do this this way. just been pointing the kind of the point outwards I think they show it on the on the diagram to go inwards uh, I should probably just made them every other one do in a different way Yeah, that'll work cool. And I guess we might as well put the little pegs in.
I like this new holder I just got as well. It's 3D printed that fits all the Tamiya cements. That one it fits nice and snug, which I like. This one I can take out, but yeah. Pretty neat. I was just going to make one out of wood, but that saved me trouble, especially with this weird shape. Yeah, no more. Almost knocking these over. We just got to let them cure a little bit, and then we'll do the SMDs. I might bend all those grounds over first, but I know it's going to take these a, a little bit to really set up because the last time you did, so I'll be right back when, once he's set up. Oh, okay. I think these have dried enough. Let's see if we can start bending some of these negatives, and I got this nice little tool with a little notch in it. I can grab it. I think that one's going to be our negative actual post, this one. So what we want to do is take this one and we just grab it as low as possible. Just one. Slide it over to it, bend it over to the other one. Solder all them. Mm -hmm. okay, they're looking good. We're just making a big negative loop. Prongs come together. And this makes it so much nicer because now I can actually touch fresh solder to what was solder at the same time. That's what he's helping hands. So much nicer instead of using utilizing one of your hands to hold a part or a wire or something. That works. What I can do is take a little three volt battery and kind of try to touch the negative and the positive. Same time. Sometimes it's not that easy. Forget how I did it last time. Before we start doing it, bending these center ones because we'll eventually have to bend them down 90 degrees and a little bit and then up. <clears throat> we had enough room for this post for mist to come through. It's really isn't much. <clears throat> so now we're to doing the SMDs. Fun, 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 fun. Alright, so it's just doing some glue. I'll do the flashers in the blue and the red. So I'll put a little 
Spray the whole thing with that oily. I don't like that kicker. And spray your stuff with some oily, whatever it is. I'm going to get this LED in here sooner or later. Let me just put the blue thing. I'm kind of on the fast side. Getting in between these towers of slaves. And these are just regular uh, LEDs. These two are flashers. These are regular. But yeah, I wanted to get those uh, resistors on there. Grab one of these. And I'm able to move the shrink tube over top. So. touching this is where I like because now I can actually touch this fresh solder and that's what gives you a good solder to yep a little tug test and there we go and I think these were taking a red small red slide over top Good, so I got those resistors on that. Speed the step, that was quicker. So I'm trying to find out what wire was what and I should attach the positive, which would be new, to the negative, or the negative, I'm sorry, the negative from you. Let me put that on there like that. This one's positive, real quick. Do that. And I do need 
like one more helping hand. Sure. Negative. Get a positive. And if we get no flashing, we're in trouble. Yay! Seal you when we, you know, close to the stuff with the kicker already on it. where I want to give it. I have to do. Alright, now this positive to the slave goes to that negative. Yeah. I should have checked before I saw a shrink you with the other one. This negative and this negative. There's, yep, on the two non flashers. He's gonna solder them together and also solder them. Um, two of those little. There we go. pieces of uh, wire that I cut off the extra part of the resistor wire that I need. Just makes things solder so much easier when you do that. Instead of trying to solder these two little points.
Well, now we got something good for the, uh, when we're connecting a bunch of negatives up, because we're going to have to connect the negative to the negative that's actually coming up the pylon, and then to the negative to the, to these, orange ones, and then the negative from the little beacon light I'm going to put in this little hole here. You know, we got a bunch of negatives to go together. It's so much easier if you have this wire than those tiny little wires that never want to. thing I'll do is take these two here keep you together we're gonna show you through I think I really read trim through just to hold you all together and then all of them we're going to put through a green one like we did with this one. And it just keeps the wires neater. Sends them to the back. Just keeps those as a bundle as they're not a connection point, they're just a junction. And I think last but not least, we'll just slide it through one of these. If you try to get all of them at one time, I don't think you'd be able to get them through. Okay, so now it's just to bend the positives in. And you want to get them as close to the center hole that's for this as possible. Okay. So yeah, what we're doing. Well, I don't really need you. We're taking the center ones and just put them straight to the center. Put this bendy tool so it's just covering the edge of the hole and then bend that right up. And keep doing that all the way around. You see it makes it much much better at working on the rest of the light here if these are all you know I can even try to heat shrink this a little bit. It won't squeeze over all of these, but it'll at least make it a little tighter. But all I really want this for is just to hold them into a one coherent. I think it shrink a little bit. Like I said, this kit's a little more inexpensive, but you do have to do a little more work. But uh, like I said, I like that. I like having to build the boards, the flash boards. I like having to build this piece instead of you just having a, a circuit board that already has all the little LEDs on it. I mean, that's fine. That's great, too. But to save some money, and all I have to do is do a little bit of more crafting, which kind of makes me feel like I'm building the ship more than just installing electronics in it and it allows you to customize like you do with all that 
So I guess the best thing to do is let's slide her in here and see what she does. See if she clears everything. The other one does. So he do. We're going to have these and seven or whatever other wires coming through here. Plus more if I do a slide up top. So, you should kind of be like that. Oh, it fit perfectly. All those are, yeah, and those are a little better in the center. I can rebend those. That's the way it should be. There's orange lights right at that beacon. And that puts them off kilter. So it should be like this. But that's all there is to it. And we just got to frost these insides on this. Do I'm not sure if I'm going to go with the vinyl or the, the metal photo etch. I feel like gluing something down or would it just be easier just to put vinyl there and call it a day. But I'm almost wondering if I want to leave the photo etch that brass color. I might even do that with the uh, JJ Prize, where it has the blades, and the same thing with the Fal the Franklin. Which the Franklin, I ordered a kit from uh, Gary Hughes. I ordered the one one thousandth Enterprise TOS light kit because it'll give me the amber lights nacelles and they're about the same nacelles and it's about the same size ship so about the same amount of lighting in it maybe not so much uh, for the windows you know on the hull but that's going to be a nice kit I want to get to as well because I'm trying to I love to build these I have every Enterprise I got the X1 which is the first and then the TOS we're building now the refit I already built gonna have an A yet to build and then I have a B, a C, I have two D's, and then I do one D that's together, and another D with the saucer and the secondary hull are separated. And I think I'm going to do a, like a board type platform, like the base. And I'm not going to build a whole cube, but I'll make a nice square base, and all they used on the TOS was sprues. That's how they got all that piping and stuff, they just took sprues and just lay them and crisscross them everywhere and so I'll cut off all like you know I'll probably want to cut off the little number plates and use sprues and then you know hide lights inside there where you see that bluish green or blue or whatever lights deep in like a little pit and I figured that would be neat to have because that did happen in one of the TOS or the next generations where they met the board got one of the episodes that they had saucer separate. Well, let's see if we can test all these. Put these two together. At least my lights. I can't test the other ones until I get all the, the whole nacelles put together and start wiring it. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go, folks. I don't know how it'll come out with the lights off. Especially my hand in the way. Even them on themselves sometimes the way it's sequenced because these flashers are going to be random sooner or later they'll sync up I don't think between the bizarres but between themselves you know the blinkers per bizarre they'll, they'll lock up the same thing I did with like the torpedo launchers on the next one once in a while they, they sync up 
And I think I went with a good call doing that plastic in a red. It glows that red, which is more the traditional way you kind of see it, but then there's going to be all the amber going around in spirals. So it's going to wash everything else out, but hopefully we'll see these. But that's it, folks. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we... Uh, Next thing I gotta do is get the blue warp, uh, blue LED strip put in the, in the cells for the warp and the warp chiller drills, chiller drills, and drill a hole in here and try to sneak that wire down through. It's gonna be another two small little. I don't know. I wonder if I just drill a hole all the way through and let the light bleed from this, but it'll be an orange light. It'll be that amber light the most, because that's where that one bulb is going to be, is right dead center. I don't know if I mean, I'm getting enough, but I don't want them to really flash. I want those little ones to stay on. So I think I'm going to just do the, take the time and put that little SMD in there. What I probably could do is also is drill through. It's like that hole's right on the line, it looks like, and where this disc sits. I have to drill through first and see. Watch it be right on that lip. But then I can always grind that in if it is. If it's on that lip or on that ledge. I can just grind this piece and get that SMB to fit in there. Looks like right there. It's going to be right on that little line there, probably. How these look. Yeah, I could probably chisel away a little bit just to get it through. It doesn't need much. And make sure that there, if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong now where it's easier to fix than later. So, thanks for watching and I hope uh, this gave you an idea to how to spruce up you know, especially this, like, you know, if you get, like, tenant controls, his is a whole circuit board with at little SMDs, and it gives you the blues and the greens and the reds and then your spiral, so you wouldn't have to do anything like this. But I kind of also like this because I get to use the old uh, Christmas tree stuff and get all that other stuff in there. Like I said, I don't know how much you're going to see the shapes and stuff, but it kind of pulls some light a little further from the amber one, so... But until next time, thanks for watching.